I'm Zakira and welcome back to my channel. Or I guess this will be welcome to most of you watching this because ha! Algorithms. So I've been flip-flopping on what to do for this video because I had a few different ideas but uh, the other ideas would just take too long to put together properly and my upload schedule has already been like totally messed up and I don't want to go too too long without a new video. So I figured I'd just turn this illustration process into an art and chat vid. And then if the other idea works out, I can still do it because it's my channel. <laughs> anyway, I figured I'd do a little topic discussion video since it's been a while since I did something like that. And I have been having some serious creative block for a while now. And since this illustration you see me drawing right now kind of ties into that, I figured for today's subject, I'd talk about selfish art and the reason every artist should do it. I believe this is a subject I've seen already uh, floating around the artist community once in a while, so I know I'm definitely not uh, pioneering this for sure, uh, but selfish art, or at least what I like to call selfish art, is when you create a piece of art that is 100% just because you want it. <laughs> you know, it's not to explore new techniques or to practice, it's also not to try and say any particular message or whatnot but literally just because you want to have it. Like you just want to hang it up on your wall and just stare at it by yourself. And you may disagree with the word choice of calling this kind of art selfish. And I kind of agree, selfish tends to have a negative annotation and that's not really the tone that I'm intending. Uh, but it's the word I'm using. If you guys have a better term for this, you know, feel free to post them in the comments. But regardless of word choice, I think selfish art is a super important part of being an artist or doing anything creative. Whether that's illustration or music or writing or even just making YouTube videos. These are all things that are creative and personal, but they are also things that we often share with others. And when that becomes the norm, it can be a really weird balance sometimes because when you need to create personal things for the public, it ends up not really being personal anymore. But if it's not personal anymore, then the entire point of creating personal projects is lost. So especially with life moving like so freaking fast with uh, social media and growing your audience and just like anything that has to do with the entertainment, I don't even want to call it business, like entertainment business, because plenty of people create stuff and put it out there without any intention of making it into a business, but just that realm of creating and then sharing what you create publicly. It can get really easy to get caught up in doing that you end up forgetting why the hell you're doing whatever it is you're doing in the first place. Which is why I feel like doing is actually the easy part because there's always opportunities to do something. But knowing what you want to do and then once you know what you want to do, being able to constantly remind yourself of it and constantly stay grounded in that even through all the distractions of all the possible things you could be doing takes a whole lot more discipline and it's something that you have to do on your own like nobody can do that for you and i guess like that's a motto within anything you do in life but at least with creativity i think one of the best ways to continue to stay grounded in what you want and what you like to create is da -da -da -dun, selfish art because creating selfish art takes you back to a time when you just started creating you know before you started really sharing it with others Maybe it was because you were just bored and wanted something to do, or maybe you wanted to express your love for a show by making fan art, or maybe you did have a grand goal from the very start of making a comic book because you were so inspired by a comic artist or a comic you've read and you wanted to do that too. You know, like all those three things literally make up my reasons for starting illustration, and those reasons do change as you continue to explore new things. But whatever that reason may be, that was you. That's where your art comes from, and that's where you're at your most genuine. And being genuine in your art ultimately is what will also connect your art with others. So in a way, creating for yourself ultimately ends up helping you create for others too. And this doesn't mean that it always has to apply to your 
you know, super deep personal cave dwelling paintings that nobody understands. It applies to whatever it is that genuinely connects to you and that you just jive with. Like for some artists, that actually literally is finding and predicting trends and trying to make art that will get a lot of likes and creating patterns that aren't deep and personal but simply something that fits the popular aesthetic. And I think a lot of people will look down on that whenever they hear about that kind of art. Like they're always like, oh, people like that are just chasing likes and just want attention and aren't being true to themselves. And I'm like, no, that is their art, bro. <laughs> like if you listen to some of these people, they are so into it. Like they study fashion magazines and blogs just to try to like methodically predict what's going to be popular in the coming months so that they can be ready for it when it hits. And I'm like, dude, that's their game, you know? Like that's, they're just so passionate about what they do. And I don't see any difference between that and like, you know, the Bob Rosses of the art world who just really like making things in their style and just practicing it over and over again and becoming a master at it. They're both really genuine, they're both really beautiful, and I think people appreciate people who are genuine no matter what it is they're doing. So it's really all up to you to figure out what it is that makes you genuine and be disciplined enough to stick to it. For me, one of my favorite things about creating art is the freedom to change. To continuously explore new styles and techniques and, and mediums and just the freedom of not having to do something in one way. I always love the challenge of new things and I think that's why I'm so drawn to illustration because it's just there's always new things to learn. The illustration you see me drawing is really different than my usual work because it's sort of like a big collage of lots of different things going on at the same time. It's really random and surreal and just things don't make any sense and that's exactly what I was shooting for. I was kind of inspired by the doodle art style, you know that style where you just grab a sharpie and start drawing little patterns and characters all connecting together until you fill up a canvas. Sort of like graffiti and I've just always loved that style. I love graffiti, I love doodle art, you know, because you can just stare at it for like hours just finding all the little things and every piece is like its own little world. And this piece is definitely an example of me creating some selfish art. I've had a lot of creative block this year. Uh, I had a pretty good run during May for Mermaid, which was nice, but for the most part, if you guys have been following me for a while, then you know that I definitely haven't been as, I guess, prolific in the same sense this year as I was uh, in years prior. And it's really been in like all creative respects, or at least like, personal project creative respects because I did do some like uh, commissioned project stuff but when it comes to just like drawing and sketching regularly like I haven't been going at that all that much this year I mean I used to you know draw every night before going to bed and I, I can't really remember how long it's been since I've been doing that regularly and the same goes with my music like I know I've mentioned and even shared a few little uh, instrumental songs I made using some software but I don't think I've mentioned much about my songwriting like lyrical songwriting I've been doing that for almost two years now. Uh, it's just been like a different creative outlet for me. It's a fun thing to do when I want to make something but I'm not in the mood to draw. But like this year has been just oof in that department too. Like I just can't finish songs. I come up with like one verse or snippet and then just can't finish it. So yeah, creative block has, has uh, been a bee. <laughs> in all respects this year and I just really wanted to get myself to to make something to create something to just draw something and just draw something without planning or thinking about like what I'm gonna do with it afterwards so it was like I don't know like 1 a.m. in the morning when I started on this because I'm most creative in the middle of the night I am a night owl which I kind of sometimes really wish I wasn't but I am <laughs> I am just most calm and focused and creative at night and and I just started sketching and sort of just letting any idea that pops into my head come out. I'm a big proponent of the yes and principle, which I think is something that's actually a 
practice technique within acting and improv, but it's when you just say yes and move on. You don't ever try to backtrack and disagree with ideas. You just spit ideas out and say yes to every single one and then try to continue to build on it. It's something that I tend to do a lot of when I write stories, but not so much with illustration. Usually I'll either already have a conceptual idea in my head before I start drawing, or I will just try and doodle and do the whole yes and thing until I gather a basic conceptual idea and then I will just like really refine it. But uh, cr creative block tends to get in the way <laughs> with gathering conceptual ideas and refining them. So I thought, why not try to just yes and an entire illustration? And if I'm being totally honest, it still has some composition. I'm not sure if it's very noticeable in the end result, but I did try to have everything fit into a silhouette of an angel, or like, I don't know if it's an angel, or rather just like a lady with a wing, <laughs> maybe a fairy or something, I don't know. But when it came to everything within the illustration, it really was just midnight oil and saying yes and to everything. Halfway through, I figured almost as an excuse for the craziness of everything, I'd put this uh, weird tree in the up left corner, which would technically kind of be coming out of the lady's head, <laughs> and it spells out the word dream. So as a way to give sort of a aha to the viewer who may be like very confused about everything and just you know give you something real to hold on to, which is, oh, it's just a dream, that's why it doesn't make any sense. But the reality was, this was a very selfish painting. Uh, I wanted to create something that I could just stare at for hours, coming up with stories for all the little details. And also just remind myself, like, how much I love the feeling of illustration. Just sitting down for hours and consuming yourself in something. You know, trying out new ideas and techniques. And the way my mind always wanders everywhere when I paint, but without any, like, you know, emotionality or bad feelings, like, but just sort of thinking about things as they are. And I guess I'm kind of describing meditation, aren't I? Well, I mean, at least that's how it is once I start getting into the groove. I always have a bit of a panic moment right before I start coloring in a large piece like this because I'm always like, ah, I'm gonna mess it up. But once I get into it, it's, uh, it's nice. So if you've made it this far into the video, I'd encourage you to go and make some selfish art today. Whether it's an illustration, or a story, or a poem, or a song, or a sculpture, <laughs> or a video, you know, whatever it is that you love to do, go and make something for yourself. And decide whether you want to share the piece with others after you make it. But while you make it, just think to yourself that you're never going to share it. 
is just yours. You're just making it so you can admire it and then stick it in your drawer afterwards. But if you are comfortable sharing it once you're done, then go ahead. Maybe even like tag me, you know, haha, -ha. hint hint, <laughs> you know, so I can see some uh, selfish art from you guys, but uh, just take the time to remind yourself what it is you love about creating. This illustration actually sparked an idea for me, which was uh, kind of what I mentioned at the beginning of this video. I thought since I've been having, you know, creative block with writing songs, uh, why not try to write a song for this illustration? I think giving myself that barrier and limitation of what to write about and giving myself almost a, a sort of a character to write for tends to help me write better. I guess that's why I, I tend to gravitate towards writing uh, fictional stories. I mentioned earlier that I've been writing songs for about two years now, but I haven't shared any of my songs publicly because... I don't really know. I just like haven't been ready for that, I guess. <laughs> like even though I really do want to, I'm just like super, super shy about singing. And it's not like, I'm shy about singing, look at how cute I am. Like no, it's not cute. It's just a pain in the ass. <laughs> like sorry, but like just anytime I want to go and share my singing with literally anyone, it's like, oh, hey, anxiety, did not expect to meet you here. How's it been? Because I suck, or I mean, okay, fine. I, at least I feel like I suck because I'm a perfectionist about everything. So it's really hard for me to not get hung up on like every mistake and every flat note and stuff. Even though like I completely don't care about that stuff when I listen to music, like some of my favorite artists, music artists are people who don't have like perfect voices and stuff. So it's just you know, <laughs> perfectionist, stupid brain. <laughs> But maybe making it a sort of preset challenge will help me get over it better because you guys know I love me a preset challenge. Anyway, that's all for today's art and chat. Do let me know what you think about the illustration and the idea for the song and your thoughts on selfish art in general. I love hearing other people's views on subjects like this. If you did find this video enjoyable or interesting in any way, please do hit the thumbs up as that helps me out a bunch. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell to stay notified about upcoming videos. If you'd like to follow me on social media, all the links to that are in the description box. And I've also just recently started uploading little videos onto Amino Stories. So if you guys have Amino, I'd really, really appreciate any follows, likes, and feedback over there because I'm brand new and you guys would be helping me out a lot. The link to that will also be in the social media section of the description box. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, stay awesome, stay inspired, always. See ya!